Alright, I had this thing in the on the charger for a little bit. We've had uh, negative teens and I zapped this battery. It didn't start in a few weeks. Should start right up now. I just want to get stuff that looks like it's going to come down in the trail and those two definitely look like they're going to come down plus i want to get this uh whole tree line kind of cleaned up over time so what i'm going to do is take this little guy out and then there's kind of a nice natural path right through right through here so I'll go ahead and open that up. And I've been wanting, wanting, I've been wanting uh, kind of an angled path out of this quote unquote trail, road, whatever. Like something that I can just, cause I pull a lot of logs lengthwise. Cause I do most of my logging, firewood and stuff. <clears throat> uh, during the winter mainly because it's just nice and I have time and I love being out here this time of year and because it keeps the logs a little bit cleaner pulling them you know dragging them. and that's what I do right now is I just drag them out to a landing area and then I'll come over here with the skid steer grapple and dump trailer cut them to length or just buck them out and load them and then dump them because <clears throat> this part of the property part of the farm is not connected it's divided by water by a creek to the main farm so I meant to record it and I forgot driving over here uh, so Otherwise, I would just drag these right out to where I want to cut them up, but that's not an option for me here. So, I'm going to open that up. That thing is so rotted at the bottom, that dead ash, that, uh, I don't know. We'll see if I can just pull it off of there. Otherwise, it'll only take a small cut.
Oh. <laughs>
path through worked well. So I got that log sitting right out there in the field. So <clears throat> now when I bring logs down this road, I can just go out into the field there instead of going through this little curvy part. Because when you drag logs behind you, if you go around curves or corners, and there's trees there usually, it can break the log. So we got most of that out. That'll be some good bonfire wood there. So I'm gonna skip that uh, leaner there and I'm gonna drive all the way around the property to the point right now. So you guys can see that. It's gonna take a while on the tractor, so I'll uh, try to fast forward this bit. Well, I don't know if you could see that very well, but <clears throat> I hit a log that was coming out. And this has happened before on this machine. I'll hit something with the front tires because like the front tires are even with the back tires, which is kind of obtuse for a tractor, for a utility tractor this size. And I love this thing because it's 74 horse uh, at the PTO, something like that. <clears throat> it's 70 plus, 74 horse plus engine, three cylinder Perkins. Great little tractor, I love it. Four wheel drive, no loader right now, but 
honestly <clears throat> I I've looked at I've I've shopped for loaders for years for this thing um, I bought I actually bought one a few years ago that I probably could have made work on this then I ended up selling it because <clears throat> it's just like I don't know once you get a loader on there it's this thing becomes almost useless in the woods like as far as our woods goes like it's all twisty tur curvy super tight stuff or at least in a few parts and i like to be able to whatever i could have taken it off and on i guess but for five grand i was like you know <clears throat> anything i could do with the loader on this thing i i i could just do with the skid steer so i went that direction and got the skid steer and sold that loader and I think that's the right choice. Um, now, if I could find a Massey loader, the right Massey loader, the fit this thing, then that might be a different story, but I've, I've never been able to find one. Um, so it was going to be hodgepodge. And the loader I bought was actually a little bit too big for this thing, so that, that was a factor. <clears throat> so anyway i really love it because it turns really tight and it's a ton of horsepower and the only thing that's ever stopped it to date is that shipping container it wouldn't move i mean it would push that this little thing three cylinder perkins and it's eight foot wide so super stocky and again, I mean, these are just under, these are like, you know, 88 inches or something. And those are like 92 or, you know, you can barely fit through an eight foot door, <clears throat> which is great. Um, yeah, we've had this for like 10 years and it's, it's pretty much never let me down. It's just a really nice, clean, simple four-wheel drive, which is imperative. With the budget I had 10 years ago, starting out on this property, it was a choice of either a smaller tractor with a loader, like a 40 horsepower or less with a loader, and an older one at that, or a 70, you know, five horsepower four-wheel drive I could have found a 70 plus horsepower two-wheel drive with the loader but I knew I was gonna need four-wheel drive because of the just everything that I've done with it. <laughs> just <laughs> the mud and the multitude of uses I've used this thing on uh, the past 10 years this is pulled out semis this has pulled out uh, dump trucks, gravel trains, UPS trucks, uh, out of mud and snow and ice. So it, it's a very powerful machine. It's pulled huge logs. I mean, the thing always surprises me with its pulling power. <clears throat> but the shipping container, this thing actually slid it better or about the same as the um, T190, which I guess makes sense. It's about the same horsepower, but this thing just has much better traction. Anyway, anyway, what had just happened is I hit the, I hit something mid turn in one of those tight little twisty things. It was covered in snow and I didn't really see it. And this has done this before, either when it's, <clears throat> back in my younger days sometimes uh i had a hydraulic leak and when it got low on oil a couple times hydraulic fluid not motor oil it did this but i know it's it's topped up and that you know, it's not leaking now um but it still does this and it's done this honestly for years once in a while over five years uh once or twice a year and it'll hit something like that like i'll be brush hogging and hit something or 
I mean, it's always it's always hit something like that during turn, and the whole steering like you'll hear it knock over, and then I won't be able to steer one direction. Like I can turn all the way to the left, but it only goes straight or a little bit past straight on the right side, and the and the wheel will lock up. In the past, I've just kind of neglected it because, I mean, I looked into fixing it and <coughs> there's like a, a pretty serious part uh, down here in the steering shaft that's like a, I don't, I forget the name of it. It's almost, it's not a planetary gear, but it's, uh, oh gosh, it's like a steering column. And then there's another cylinder on the outside of that main column, and there's a bunch of holes. Universal, oh uh, gosh, what's it called? Can't remember. But it just slides up and down, and when you turn that, it moves this and then applies pressure out of those different holes to steer different ways. So I was like, is it that? Or it could be these things down here. So I've, I've kind of chased this thing for years and I finally, I think I just realized what it was because <coughs> I turned around to come out because I didn't want to get stuck in the woods not being able to turn to the right. You can usually get around still because you can turn to the left. You just got to do a bunch of forward, backwards, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I turned it all the way, turned the wheel all the way to the left, the way it would go. And 